I'll never forget it. It was um, a guy I met at church. He tells me how he was struggling with pornography. He said to me, Craig, I'm at the end of Porn Boulevard. I, I said, where? where? Where's your situation taking you? He said, to a Yahoo chat room posing as a 12-year-old boy soliciting other kids for photos. He said, I didn't think when I got into this I'd be there, but that's where I ended up. I said, so Bill, what have you lost? Because this has taken, he said, everything from him. I lost my wife, I lost my job, I lost my house. I am bankrupt and I'm losing five and a half years of my life in jail. We stayed in contact with him and his family. A couple months later, I get a phone call. He says, Craig, I, I got sentenced to Boston's Devons Federal Penitentiary. I, I, I said, when are you going? He said, T tomorrow. I said, I'm in Boston. I think it's just a God thing. I'd love to be able to, to, to take you and, and have some time with you. It was rough. It was rough to actually see, like, this is where this takes you. This is where the road ends up for this guy. And, uh, and I wouldn't wish it on anybody. Um, but, I mean, the Bible says that sin's fun for a season, but it comes to an end. And to, to see that season end um, for this guy, man, it was tough um, to watch him lose everything. We would drive back to the airport, and, and Kevin is driving. Kevin is Bill's best friend from childhood. I'm sitting in the back seat, and I, I just had to ask. I said, Kevin, I just got really one question. This day kind of just stinks, and I know it's been tough on you to see your best friend now in jail, but did you ever know that Bill was struggling with this. That's, that's, I guess, what I need to know. And Kevin kept driving. It was silent. I then apologized. Kevin, I'm sorry, man. I, I didn't mean to put blame on you. I, I just wanted to know for my own sake. And then he said, Craig, I'll be asking myself that question for the next five and a half years of my life as my best friend is in jail. He said to me, he said, it's almost like he wanted to get caught. Later, I would ask Bill, did you want to get caught? And Bill said, yes. Getting caught was the only way I was going to stop. So Bill would say things to Kevin every now and then in, in hopes that Kevin would kind of take that bait and, and he would ask. And Kevin said, but you, you can't. I couldn't just put my friend on that sin. I couldn't just put my friend on that situation because I want to think the best of him. And even though the signs were there, I never had the guts to just say, Bill, what is going on? And now Bill sits a year into his term in Boston, in, in jail, as his friend Kevin sits there and goes, I should have just stepped up to the plate. And when I saw things that didn't line up with what I know Bill believes, I should have asked him. Confess this to God. Confess this to somebody else. And let's do that in a way of love and compassion that we can help each other out. We were at a porn convention in Las Vegas. A reporter from Nightline came up to us. His name is Martin Bashir. And he said, hey, I'm kind of intrigued by the, the approach here that you guys are at a porn show and you're, you're handing out Bibles. Could I talk to you? So we get on a conversation, the cameras are rolling, and then he finds out that our ministry and, and myself, uh, that we're friends with Ron Jeremy. Ron Jeremy is the largest porn star in the industry. I mean, he's the uh, 29 years in porn, 1,800 X-rated films, and 5,000 women he has slept with. I debate Ron on, uh, on college campuses across the United States. He's the porn king, I'm the porn pastor. We both share our views on pornography, and then kids ask us questions. Afterwards, we go out to dinner. Afterwards, we go back to the same hotel, and we'll talk about life, about heaven, about hell, about friends, family. Ron's met my wife, he's met my kids, he's met my pastors, he's met uh, people that mean the world to me. I've started to share those things with this guy because I believe that's what the Great Commission is all really about. I, I don't hate the guy. I love the guy. I don't like what he does for a living. So Martin Bashir says, why don't you bring him on over to the booth? So I call him. Ron comes over. Martin says to Ron, what do you think about Craig? And Ron says, I like Craig. I like what his ministry does because if people don't want to be in porn, I don't want him in porn. I'm glad he's there to help 
women out of the porn industry, and I'm glad he's there to help people that want to stop looking at our stuff. We don't need him. Then he turns to me, and I'm like, okay, he's going to ask me what I think about Ron Jeremy, because that's like, okay, what am I going to say? And instead, he, he looks at me and he says, Craig, is Ron Jeremy going to make it to heaven? He kind of took a deep breath, and there's cameras and people all around me. And I said, porn won't keep him out. The 1800 videos, the, the 5,000 women, the 29 years, that, that's not going to matter. If he decides that that hole in his heart can only be filled by God, that, that there's a God out there that nothing Ron Jeremy can do and has done will, will stop God from loving him any less. That's why we keep going back to those conventions because God allows us to have those types of conversations. But today, my encouragement to you it would be the same thing I shared with Ron that there's nothing you can do that would make God love you any less. This isn't your lot in life. This isn't, you don't have to walk out of these doors thinking, oh, I'm just going to struggle forever. And No, you can walk out of these doors encouraged to know that there's a God that loves you despite of all the garbage in your life, despite of all the things that constantly trip you up. There's a God that loves you no matter what you've done that doesn't keep record of wrong that says, I want to give you something better. It's time we believe it. Not uh, the lives of the world that say this is what you need. We start to believe that, that Jesus Christ is the answer and he has something better for all of us. And that the sin over here is just in our way. It's just slowing you back. It's slowing you down. It's holding you back from all that God wants to do in your life. So you need to talk to God about it. Talk to somebody else about it. And then today, clean it up. Get it out of your life so you can start to experience something that's so much better.